Okay, so if you're really serious about passing algebra, then you have to know how to do a problem uh, like this. And this is actually a pretty basic level problem, not the easiest, not the hardest by any means, but you definitely need to know how to handle this. Now, if you're looking at this and you're like, hmm, I don't really know what to do, well, then, uh, you know, you want to stick around and I'm going to show you exactly what's going on on this particular problem. Now, you should ask yourself what you... Uh, you know, take a mental inventory real quick. Like, what do you think you know and uh, what are you confused about? Okay, that's always the best way to, uh, to make uh, use of my videos. I always encourage you to do that. And, of course, if you think you know how to solve this problem, definitely uh, do so. Make a pause video and, and it shouldn't take you that long to do. Now, the one thing about uh, these particular problems, and let me just get right to it. We're dealing with powers and exponents, obviously, is that uh, here is the problem and here is the solution there are multiple kind of paths that a student can take uh, to get to the solution, okay? So my steps, uh, you might solve this problem perfectly, but you might have gone this route. Maybe I will take this step, okay? It doesn't make a difference. As long as you're taking the proper steps to advance this problem and get to the final solution, then you're going to be good to go. Now, um, what is the final solution? Well, we want to fully simplify uh, this situation. Obviously, you're multiplying uh, two variable uh, fractions that involve uh, powers and exponents. Okay, that's obviously multiplication. You should end up with no negative exponents. Okay, so that's pretty typical um, in algebra as your final answer. You don't want to have any negative exponents. You want everything fully simplified. So, for example, if you were doing a fra fraction problem and you left your final answer as 100 over 300, your teacher wouldn't like that. You're like, you know, hey, listen, just finish it up and give me the final simplified version, one third, okay? And that's what you need to do here is to uh, really work towards fully simplifying this. Again, that means that uh, uh, you won't have any negative exponents in your answer, okay? Now, of course, I'm gonna get to all this and what's required to solve this particular problem in just one second, but uh, first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and uh, over several years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. If you're interested, you can check out my math help program by following the link in the description of this video. But basically, I have 100 plus uh, different math courses ranging from pre-algebra, um, Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2. I'm going to be launching pre-calculus here uh, very shortly. Really excited about that because I love teaching, you know, uh, advanced mathematics and pre-calculus is uh, pretty advanced uh, stuff. So if you are taking pre-calculus in uh, just maybe a few more weeks at the time um, I'm posting this video, my course will uh, be launched. But I also have uh, many courses in the area of test preparation to include things like the GED, SAT, ACT, mathematics sections, uh, CLEP exam, AccuPlacer, Alex exam, teacher certification exams like the Praxis uh, or CBEST, uh, uh, nursing entrance exams like the TEAS, all those different exams uh, that I mentioned have uh, math sections on them, and their, their math is sometimes pretty challenging, okay? And if you don't do well in the math section, you don't do well on the exam. So if you need help, just go to my website, check out my full course catalog. I should have what you are studying. If I do not, drop me a line and I will help you out the best I can. I also do a lot uh, with independent learners like homeschoolers. I have a great homeschool learning program and then obviously help those of you that are just struggling in your current math courses. Now, uh, the one thing I cannot do for you the, that you must do for yourself if you truly are serious about uh, doing well in math, and that is this. You have to take great math notes, and that does require work. It does require focus. Uh, that's why a lot of people don't take good notes, <laughs> because it requires work. It's just like, oh, I don't do the homework, or my dog ate my homework. I don't have it today. And Or, or maybe you're trying to copy your friends, uh, your homework answers from your friend. Listen, if you're trying to, if you're not willing to do the work, you can't be surprised at your grades, okay? But over decades of teaching math, mathematics, it's just apparent to me that those students who really do have worked hard to have great notes almost always do very, very well. And the reverse is true. Those students kind of blow off note-taking. They end up looking like this at the end of the year, and they don't like their grades, okay? Maybe they get uh, through with a C-, but, you know, listen, let's be honest. 
uh, about it. Those of you who end up with grades like this, you can you can be you can do much better. Okay, but you got to work. You got to put the work in, right? And you got to work smart, and you got to work hard. But uh, anyways, that's why I'm here to tell you. Right? I'm here to tell you the truth about all this stuff. But anyways, in the meantime, as you're improving in your notes, I offer uh, detailed, comprehensive math notes that you can use to include pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, and trigonometry. You can find the links to those notes in the description of this video. All right, let's get to the problem. We have this, and we're multiplying by this. Okay, again, different steps you can take to get to the final answer, but I need the fully simplified version. And uh, before I show you my uh, solution here, let's just review what we're talking about. Well, the topic is the property of exponents uh, or powers, okay? And these are the various rules that you're gonna need to know. So I'm just gonna write them down. A to the uh, mth, uh, a to the mth power, okay? This is the exponent, that's the base. Uh, times a to the n is equal to a to the n plus n. Now, I don't want to turn this into a full lesson on this. That's what my Algebra 1 course is. And, of course, I have more videos uh, like this in my Algebra playlist on my YouTube channel. But um, these are the rules that I'm talking about, okay? These are the ones that you need to be familiar with. When we're dividing powers, you subtract the exponents like so. Uh, I'm just showing you the rules. And if you want to just write the rules down and maybe put them into your notes, if they're not already in your notes, a to the zero power is equal to one, uh, a to the negative n is equal to one over a to the n, a to the n to the m is equal to a to the n m, and then we can have another rule here, a to the n, uh, b to the m, all that to the c is a n c b m c, okay? All right, so these are basically the properties of uh, exponents you need, and of course we need to apply them in this particular problem. All right, now if you want to write these down, okay, and then try this problem here, I'll pause the video if you want to write these down, but I'm going to show you the problem again. Here it is. If you want to just say, okay, I think I can use, you know, apply these properties to do this problem, well then that's excellent. Listen, in algebra, there's tons of expressions, I mean, almost all the expressions that you deal with have some sort of powers uh, involved, many of them do, most of them do. You got to be an expert uh, on the properties of exponents, just no way of getting around it, okay? But again, um, different ways you can um, approach a problem, you could take different steps, you know, um, there's not only one way to do a problem when, when we're talking about uh, simplifying things with uh, properties and exponents. And so with that being said, I'm gonna get into my solution now. Okay, so first things first, uh, one, you don't want to do too many steps at once, okay? I talk about that in my other videos because that's a big, uh, you know, uh, thing that you definitely don't want to do. So I'm going to kind of look at, I'm going to look at these guys. I'm going to just take some one or two steps just to start to whittle these things down and start simplifying. So the first thing I'm going to do, I have this two, I'm going to distribute, okay, to all of these uh, powers. Now, this is something that a lot of students miss. They forget to take this two and and uh, raise this two. This is actually two to the first power, okay? And what we're talking about is an application of this property, okay? You have this outside exponent. I need to multiply it in, all right? Again, uh, if this is, um, you know, I'm only doing this one problem. I can't completely teach you everything about this because this is a pretty big topic uh, in algebra. Again, if you really, really want to learn this stuff, just uh, sign up for my algebra course, or um, you know, continue to watch my videos in my YouTube channel, my algebra playlist. Okay, so that's the first thing I'm gonna do. So two to the first, that's gonna be two squared. Uh, two to that third power, okay, I'm gonna multiply, that's gonna be x to the sixth, y to the negative fifth, I wanna multiply that by two, that's y to the negative tenth. So this is my uh, numerator up here in this particular fraction. Now let's take a look at this denominator I'm just going to write it again, 10 x to the negative 6, but I see this y to the 0. Anything to the 0 power, let's just go over here, anything to the 0 power is 1, okay? So that's just 1, that y to the 0. Uh, so now, uh, with that being done, let's take a look at uh, what we have remaining. Well, in this fraction, I have this negative 3, and I can distribute to x and y. Remember, these are to the first power. So that's going to make that look like this, okay? This negative 3 times these 1s, I end up like so. So that's 
you know, you don't, you don't want to do uh, maybe two steps at most with any particular line. And then you want to double check, make sure everything looks good, and then we'll continue on to simplify from this point forward. All right, so a good thing that you would want to do, and let me erase this now, I'll highlight this so we can focus on what's going on, is you could see we have uh, some of these uh, powers are negative, some are positive. Now, um, again, we're going to do this particular uh, rule right here, a to the negative n is equal to 1 over a to the n. I've done other videos on this, negative exponents. Uh, this is kind of be this is kind of confusing for some students, but again, you need to follow up with additional videos here with this um, um, this material because this is what I'm covering is usually taught like in a, a almost a complete chapter in algebra. Okay, in a lot of courses, maybe not the entire chapter, but a good chunk of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start uh, dealing with these negative exponents. So this little x to the negative six, I can move it upstairs. Okay, up on the numerator. And when I do that, it becomes positive, okay? So this is this x negative 6, and I'll move it up there. This is the result of that. Now, this 2 squared becomes 4, just to be uh, clear about this. So now I have this x to the 6 times this other x to the 6, because now I see it's this, this is x to negative 6, but I moved it up. So I'm getting rid of these negative exponents. Now, likewise, I get this y to the negative 10th. If I move it to the other side of the fraction bar, it becomes positive. Okay. All right. Again, uh, I have additional videos on my YouTube channel on dealing with negative exponents and that particular property of exponents. But anyway, so this is, you know, better. I'm, I mean, I'm just taking this, this step. You could do other things, okay, You're, that are perfectly fine. You can multiply across. You'll get to the same answer. But I'm going to just get rid of these some of these negative exponents uh, right away. So I have these uh, x to negative a third power, y to negative third power, if I move these down into the denominator, they become positive like so. Okay, so this is where we're at. Now, uh, let's go ahead and multiply. Let me just erase this so we can kind of focus in a little bit. Again, you could be do it, taking different steps and you'll get to the same answer. Now, I got one fraction and I'll multiply by another fraction. So if I multiply the respective numerators and denominators, you know, that's how you multiply fractions. So here I'm going to get 4. This is just 1, so I'm going to have 4. x to the 6 times x to the 6. If the bases are the same, you add the powers. So I'm going to add these, uh, I'm going to add the exponents. Excuse me, if the bases are the same, you add the exponents. And that's an application of this property right here. Okay, that's what that uh, says. So, you know, if you're... Um, thinking that, man, I'm confused. Well, you got to really know these properties. This is important stuff in algebra. So same base, x and x. I'm going to add these up. So now I have 4x to the 12th in my numerator. And now let's focus on uh, the denominator. So the denominator, I'm just going to get all my x's and y's kind of collectively to get uh, together. So I have my 10. I have y to the 10th right there. Now, I have y times uh, y cubed over here. So that's the same thing as y to the first. So this right here, remember, I'm going to add the exponents. That's y to the fourth. And I'm going to move it right next to that y to the tenth. I'll deal with that guy in a second. But again, I don't want to do too many steps at once. I want to just take this thing step by step. And that leaves me with this x cubed times x to the first. So this right here is x to the fourth. Okay. All right, so that's the result of doing the um, actual multiplication of this fraction. Now let's uh, continue to clean this up. So I have 4 and 10. So uh, 4 and 10, I could reduce that fraction down to 2. Oops, I don't want to do that. Use my little highlighter. I can uh, reduce that down to 2 fifths. Okay, so that's one thing you need to be doing. And then I have y to the 10th times y to the 4th down here in the denominator. So that is y to the 14th. Again, this is just uh, the bases are the same. We're multiplying, so we're going to add the uh, exponents. And I have y, uh, x to the fourth and x to the twelfth. So I'm almost there, okay? But now I have to deal with these guys, all right? I have 12 x's up in the numerator. I have four x's down in the denominator. So think about it. If I had like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That's a lot of x's, right? And I have four, one, two, three, four. Well, four can take out one, two, three, four, and I'm left with eight X's. Now, 
the reason why we have properties like this one, this is the division we're going to subtract away, is so we don't have to write out a million X's and Y's, right? We're going to use these properties, but that's what this means right here, okay? So, um, again, we have the same base, but it's the div uh, division of powers with the same uh, base, so that leaves us with uh, 8 X's in the numerator, or X to the 8th power, and this is the final answer. Now, if you uh, got this right and just took whatever steps you took, probably maybe you didn't even take the same steps as me, then I must give you a gigantic happy face with a mohawk, an A+, plus, a 100%. I think I'll give you about maybe three stars. Uh, this wasn't the easiest prom. Uh, it wasn't the most difficult prom because there's definitely more challenging proms in algebra than this dealing with powers and exponents. But hey, listen, pretty, pretty good. Okay, now, if you um, didn't get this right but understood the mistakes, well, listen, you know, that's very good as well. And if you were totally lost uh, but now understand, that's good as well. If you're totally lost and you're still lost, well, listen, you can get this, okay? You just need to continue to really, you know, understand these properties of exponents and start with smaller, uh, easier problems, okay? All right, so again, uh, no need for anybody to end up like this. If you're getting these poor grades, you know, let's do something about it, okay? But first things first, you're going to have to work hard. You're going to have to improve your note-taking. You're going to have to talk to your math teacher. Uh, now, beyond that, there's all kinds of help out there. You know, I would uh, love nothing better to be your math teacher to help you along uh, the way. So, you know, um, first of all, if you like this video, please consider smashing that like button. That definitely helps me out. And please consider subscribing because, again, I have tons of material on my channel, like over a thousand videos on my channel organized in playlists, basic to advanced mathematics. So they're uh, for you. But you have to take the initiative to watch those videos or other people's videos, okay? But find a, a qualified math teacher that you'll like and understand. But it's my passion to make uh, math uh, clear and understandable. That's my goal every time I teach mathematics. And uh, my best math help will always be in my math help program, okay? So if you really wanna learn from me, you wanna go over here. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.